So what's the big issue with the Live Tour? I want to try and give some perspective to this because I'm hearing everything that's going on and there's different agendas kicking around and there's a bunch of people writing articles, some of which are very, very good and give some really interesting perspectives on the matter. But this is my take on all of this and I'm not supporting one side or the other, but it just seems to me a little bit crazy, right? So we've got Saudi Arabia who have joined forces with Greg Norman that's your toxic cocktail. It's not the Saudis. It's not Greg. It's the fact that you've got the Saudis and you've got Greg, who's got history with the PJ Tour, who wanted to effectively wipe out the PJ Tour, and he got beaten at the time, and out of that came the WGC tournaments. So in reality, reality he did the PJ Tour or the PJ Tour players a bit of a favour because what came out of that was a lot more money and, and the sort of events that Greg was actually trying to get at the time. That's certainly my understanding. But the fact of the matter is here, everybody's going on about the moral issue of getting involved with the Saudis when we know that actually well, the bigger issue is the issue between the PJ Tour and Greg Norman. But if we just look at the Saudis for a second, you've got the Saudi Grand Prix. Formula One go to that. Nobody really bats an eyelid now. There was a little bit of a kerfuffle earlier on. You've got the Saudi national soccer team. Well, they're part of UEFA or FIFA, should I say. And they're able to participate in the World Cup. And there's no issues with them going on. And why should golf suddenly become the moral arbiter? of all of this, I really can't understand it. So what's happened now is that these players are now being presented with a mind boggling amount of money to go and play in a series of events um, with this live tour, okay? Now, I've got to be honest, when you start looking at the money, you look at supposedly Mickelson's getting 200 million, 200 million dollars. I mean, it is mind boggling. Could you say no to that in reality when you look at all the other activity that's going on in Saudi Arabia? And when you also start looking at your own country and you start looking at the governments and you say, hang on a minute, how come the PGA Tour or all these other people or all these media and everything else are trying to put on my shoulders some sort of obligation to stand up against human rights? When in reality, what's happening is my government, and I say that about the British government, the American government, whatever it may be, are supplying arms to Saudi Arabia to go and bomb the crap out of other Middle Eastern countries, namely Syria. So I'm sorry, someone needs to look in the mirror. So it just seems absolutely bizarre to me that suddenly the golfers are, are, are targets in all of this when all they're really looking to do is to max out their value and really take advantage of the enormous amount of money that's being presented to them. And the PGA Tour have said, well, if you want to go and play in that, then you're going to be banned from the PGA Tour. Well, it's quite interesting, isn't it, now? Because, of course, you've got Bryson DeChambeau, um, you've got um, uh, Dustin Johnson, you've got Kevin Nahr, and you've got those players who have resigned. From, oh, I don't know whether Bryson has, but the others have, and I'm sure he will do if, he, if he's going to get kicked out or something, I don't know. But they've resigned from the PGA Tour. So where does that leave the PGA Tour? What sanction can they put on them? Because if you look at the four majors... And everyone who runs the majors wants to have the very best golfers there and in contention. Because the last thing that you want to have is that, you know, the major is won by so-and-so, so-and-so, but all these players weren't there. That just devalues the majors in reality. So um, I don't think that's going to happen. And the PJ Tour doesn't have control of the four majors, as we know. The PJ Championships, the PJ of America, the US Opens, the US... Um, uh, Golfers Association, and then you've got um, the Masters, of course, which is Augusta, and then you've got the Open Championship, which is the RNA. So, four very different organizations that are controlling uh, the four majors. And if I was them, I would want the very best players there and I'd try and stand above it. So, everybody says that politics and, and sports shouldn't mix. Well, in reality, they do, you know, there's no question about that. But what I can't understand is when you keep looking at Saudi Arabia and every single player has said that the um, the murder of uh, 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 Jamal Khashoggi was horrendous, abhorrent, and it was. I mean, the guy was killed in the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. It was recorded by the Turks who were bugging the embassy. The guy was dismembered. Um, his wife was left in, or his wife to be was left outside. I mean, just absolutely horrendous, horrendous murder. There's no question about it. 
But the majority of the hijackers in 9-11 were Saudis. And when you look at what's happened with Jamal Khashoggi, you'd have to say, well, what's the US government done? What's the British government done? What sanctions have they imposed on Saudi Arabia for that murder that was supposedly carried out at the behest of Mohammed bin Salman, the head of state? They've done nothing. So why should the golfers do something? This is what I can't understand. And if, if the PGA Tour are saying, well, if you go there, then you're out of here. Well, the PGA Tour is there to serve its members and the PGA Tour is its members. So if you want to start kicking all your members out, you don't have a tour. So that's kind of confusing, don't you think? They're cutting off the nose to spite their face. Now, I'm not saying the whole thing couldn't have been managed better. It certainly could have been. I think, anyway, maybe Greg may have a different view. I think maybe if he had gone along to the PJ Tour, along with his backers, and maybe said, you know, we want to have a series of six events. We don't want to compromise the majors. We don't want to compromise the tour necessarily. Can we fit these six events in? And it's going to... Um, Add the, it's going to give the players this much money and we'd like them to be world ranking points, for example. Which actually I disagree with because if you haven't got all the players there, it's not fair on the players that can't get in that tournament. But anyway, that's another story. Um, so I, I really feel that the double standards being applied here are absolutely mind boggling. There are so many agendas kicking around that none of this really begins to make any sense whatsoever. I mean... If you look at this um, uh, consortium that uh, is backing Live, this financial group inside of Saudi Arabia, which is headed up by Mohammed bin Salman anyway, they bought Newcastle United Football Club in the United Kingdom. What happened there? Oh, there was a bit of uproar, you know, because of the, um, the murder of the journalist, and rightly so, there should have been. But it just went ahead. They were deemed as being fit and proper people. Make of that whatever you will. But the fact of the matter is that was allowed to go ahead. So how can people suddenly turn around and try and take the moral high ground and tell these players that they can't go and play in this tour if they want to? To me, it, it, just, it, it just doesn't make any sense. It amounts to a restraint of trade effectively if you're telling people that they can't or you're telling people they're gonna be kicked out of something. It just seems really, really odd to me. So there needs to be some context added. And I saw today, that at the tournament you had um, Lee Westwood and Ian Poulter were both there being interviewed. And one journalist made a smart ass remark. Um, I say a smart ass remark. It may have been, um, well, it was, it was there to create a reaction. Let's put it that way. And he said, would you play in a tournament um, that was organized by uh, Putin, for example? And I forget what their response was, but it was like, oh, well, that's hypothetical, so there's no point in even con com commenting that because there isn't one. Well, my response would have been, well, we follow, we follow our government. And the fact of the matter is, in the case of Ukraine, all Russian athletes and all activities in Russia and everything else have been banned. And I think most sports people and most sports organisations have supported that and are doing all they can to support all of the sanctions against Russia for their invasion of Ukraine. But there are no sanctions on Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia have not been punished for the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. They haven't been punished for the fact that the majority of the hijackers at 9-11 were Saudis. So do you see, it, it's a complete nonsense, all of this. So I'm not expressing a view really one way or the other as well, whether I think they should go and play in it or whether they shouldn't go and play in it. But what I do believe is it should be a personal choice. If you want to go and play in that tournament that has been set up by fit and proper people and, you know, whether Greg Norman's involved or not, whatever, if you want to go and play in that tournament, which is a different format, so that in itself is actually quite interesting. And it's actually a very, very different event. I mean, it's a shotgun start for a start, uh, which is something that you've never seen on the tour. And also there's a concert involved as well. There's a whole bunch of activities involved. So it really is taking golf um, in a slightly different direction, making it more fun, making it more um, 
what's the word, sort of showbiz, if you like. And for that, you know, you need some of the best players there. Um, so it's going to be quite interesting. And what I do hope is that as a consequence of this, if, if Rory McIlroy should change his mind and decide to play in these events, I hope the press don't slaughter him because he made a stance and he was right to make a stance and he wanted to do that and that's absolutely fine and that's his choice. But if all the other players are starting to shift to this, and like I say, there's no government lead on this. Saudi are not seen as being the enemy, they're seen as being our friends in the Middle East, our allies in the Middle East. We're trading with them in the Middle East. Politicians are probably getting rich on the trade in the Middle East. So I think we need to cut these guys some slack in reality. And believe me, I'm no fan of Greg Norman or anything like that. And I believe that it just happens to be that Greg and the Saudis was a toxic combination. And that gave some real fuel to the people that really wanted to kick off about this and object about it and one thing or another. But there's a dilemma now, isn't there? Because the players that have left and have resigned, what are the PJ Tour going to do now? They've been pretty silent because I bet they're thinking and I bet they've got all the lawyers around the table because it really is a dilemma for them. If they ban them from the tour, then you're going to have tour events that don't include, for argument's sake, it could be the majority of the top, I don't know, 20 golfers in the world. So that in itself is going to have an impact, I would think, on sponsorship. TV, um, maybe attendances, uh, an impact on the charities as well that the PJ Tour raises money for and raises a lot of money for. But it also potentially relegates the European Tour to number three from number two. Because maybe the live financially is going to be number one, PJ Tour is going to be number two. So what's going to happen with the European Tour? A lot of those are going to perhaps shift because it's going to be harder i would think for the european tour to secure sponsors beyond whatever the agreements are um, currently in place so there's an awful lot to happen yet um, but i do believe that this whole thing has been hijacked really and that the key um, uh, issues really haven't been addressed and that is that Here's this tour that's come along now. It's offering a mind-boggling amount of money. It's a different format. It's interesting, it's fun. But players have the choice, the personal choice to take their skill, to take their trade, one would think, to the highest bidder wherever they want to go. And the PGA Tour really need to try and work. They're being forced to. Unfortunately, they've been backed into a corner um, so you could say, well done, Greg, well done, the Saudis, you know, you've, you, you, you know, you've really, um, you've bought the support. Um, so that's going to be really, really tough. So I think they do need a rethink. The PGA Tour is going to be different, I think, going forward. The European Tour is potentially going to struggle. The Asian Tour is getting a boost. It's getting a boost with this Saudi money, without a doubt. There's a minimum, um, pots now on the Asian tour. So maybe even the European tour is going to go to number four. So there's a huge amount to happen, but I think the moral argument is dead. It simply doesn't wash. You know, to go after these players and start hitting them with questions when they're being interviewed about their involvement with Saudi Arabia, I would urge all of those players to come back and say, we'll follow our government. If our government decides that they're an enemy of the state or they believe that they are part of a, an axis of evil or a quad of evil or whatever it is you want to call it, then maybe they'll rethink. But so long as our governments are friends with them, supplying them with arms, trading, Formula One are there, soccer's there, various other sports are there, why should we as golfers compromise our potential to maximize our revenue for what in reality it's a hollow gesture okay 
So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, but I do believe that this, uh, that this whole business really has been um, hijacked and we need to just focus on these guys doing what they do best, us watching it and us enjoying it and hopefully seeing um, uh, a really different presentation of what is the greatest game in the world. Live and let live.